transmitting from the front lines of the war gaming world. You are watching Friendly Fire. Friendly Fire. The show where you can watch, learn, and even play our games live online. We will be showing some of our favorite tactics and answer your game questions. This is Friendly Fire. Hey everybody, welcome back, Devin the OG, the original Grognard, and we are back for Friday Night Firefight, Friendly Fire, whatever, it's just good Friday Night Lock and Load Publishing goodness. Got a little bit of a special treat for you today. We have not really seen much of this on the cha on our channel. We are taking a look at Terry Doherty's design of Glory and Empire First Victories, Wellington versus Napoleon, and we are fighting at Roll a C, Roll a C. If anybody knows my special super secret power, it's I can butcher any names in foreign languages so i apologize to my spanish speaking viewers um <laughs> whatever uh mr jeff fry mr sexy hexy himself is here tonight and he is here with world-renowned game designer keith tracton and the two of these gentlemen are going to be giving this game a play jeff has done some marvelous wonderful videos on it uh so go over to his channel hex to hex and just check out all the goodness that he's done with this and he's really knowledgeable of the game and of course we know mr keith tracton is a genius in his own right <gasps> gentlemen oh, <please. laughs> i turn the game over to you well good evening world <laughs> hello <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be interesting hey by the way when you hear the loud buzzer go off that's my dryer and then when you hear the <laughs> other buzzer on my phone go off that means take your medicine so <laughs> and I, I have random alarms on my phone so i'm not sure what'll go off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh I don't remember how, I think there's two or three scenarios for a rolling stuff. And we're going to play the one where there's actually some combat. So I'm just telling Keith and Devin a minute ago that this was a situation where Delaborty went out to the hills and the windmill around Rolita to lure Wellington online. And then his, I mean, his, his strategy from the start was to pull back to his primary defensive position. And should he get overwhelmed or because you know i guess i not brought the rest of the army up or whatever core he had or whatever it was but he would do some fighting with the brits there and then he would run down that road behind him and get off the map the catch in this game is he can't start pulling french troops off the map until 2 30 i think it is 2 20. oh you're kidding me <laughs> yeah and at the same time i believe it's two brigades come pouring in over here at eden for the for the Brits, quite fun. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> really if I wasn't flanked before. I'm flanked when they come on. <laughs> well, no, I I, I, I I will I will have to interject real quick. They got some really good defensive lines right here where they're at. If it wasn't for those two brigades that are coming in from behind them, these positions are pretty strong defensively. Right, right. Well, in the the you know. You're, okay, so you're on the other side of the village, and that village will screw up the approach. Right. Then you're in scrub, behind, or light uh, LDT, light density train, behind mm -hmm. two, I guess you call them rivers. Streams, rivers? And, yeah. And then right. when you back up to the, the bigger trees, then you're in the woods, and it gets even harder. Right. And you got real contours in front of you, because you yeah. count the contour lines in this game. Yeah, and that's that's something, uh, thank God for playing GBACW where I can count contour lines because <laughs> it comes in handy. And, I mean, it, he, he's made it so easy. I mean, if there's two contour lines in a in a spot, you know, you see them, you count them. Now, I will say that I'm going to zoom in and, like, well, if the, I the, the thing is, in, the, 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 Jeff, they only see my camera. They don't, they're not uh, seeing uh, yours. So. Put an arrow where you want him to zoom in. So, okay, so. Which one? Here, watch this. Tab. You, you do tab key, and there you go. So I'll help okay. you out. He tried to show me. Yeah, so right there. So if I'm moving from there up that slope straight south, then I'm going to, you know, I've got that contour. But when I was playing it, I figured once I'm up there, if I move across to that next text going south where there's also a contour line, why well, should I have to count that? I'm already up on the high ground. Right. So... Yeah, but you, when I'm moving up slopes, believe me. Yes, hit hit uh, hit F1 to move to change from the uh, ruler back to your pointer hand. There you go. Uh, yeah, you, 
Hey, one night of you teaching me. This I, is- yeah, I know. There, you really, I mean, anybody that I can back you up on. <laughs> <laughs> there, there needs to be a, a deep dive college course on 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 the intricacies of tabletop simulator. Uh, you know, you but you, you start talking, I'll start using the pointer. I mean, you know, dropping arrows everywhere. People know. People know I drop arrows everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, of course, when you're looking at the counters, when you're playing, we're going to be playing the soldiers game. So. Right. For artillery, the only number that's going to matter for firepower is in the white box. Doesn't matter whether we're shooting canister or whether you're shooting distance. It's the only number gets used is the one in the white box. Mm-hmm. All right, so okay. I don't think we, I, I haven't played anything yet where because I never got to the I haven't gotten to the brigade rules yet, which I will soon. <laughs> all of that stuff, and then of course your cohesion or morale is the big double digit number on the right side. Mm-hmm. And then your strength is the single number on the left side, and then your amount of skirmishers, your S E S E B or S E D skirmishers, is the subscript number beside the strength. Right. And then some of these units have S E D. Um, it should say them on the counters, and I know that like for these sharps guys back here, I flipped them over; they're automatically on their S E D side. So. Yeah, oh, we, it looks like we don't have the 95th. We just have the 60th, the American Rifles. And they actually, in my game, they raised a little bit of hell over here. <laughs> they cover so much of a front, so. What? No, say it isn't so. <laughs> Napoleon would not have it that way. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess the best thing we can do is I guess we get started. And yeah, just I roll some dice. Think there's any priority. Let's see. There's no weather involved in this thing. We start at 12 o'clock. And I don't see anything on who goes first. So let's check the terrain. Let's check the turn chart here. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, just says I, I S1, S3. D. The Brits would go first since they're on the attack here. That would make sense. But if not, you roll for initiative. And the initiative will matter in other parts of the game, not necessarily in this one. Um, yeah, actually, you know what, Deb, you do. Go ahead and roll for initiative. Roll two dice. Okay, now the one thing is we don't have the percentile dice in this module yet. In <clears> fact, <throat> I can't remember if TTS actually does percentile dice. So we've got two D10s. We're going to just have to nominate whenever you roll. or just going to have to agree whichever one's going to be the 10s column. Uh, well, of course, French blue will be first. Okay, well, then all right, that's fine. If we want blue to be first, that's fine. Um, now, so initiative. I, and again, not only are we teaching Keith, but we are teaching all the uh, the uh, uh, the people who are watching this. How do you roll initiative? Oh, it's just two. It's each each player rolls a, what are they, 10 sided or a 10 sided? 10 sided. Yep, ten ten sided. So you just roll, you got, what do we got, a blue and the red in the tray over there? Yep. Mm-hmm. Just roll both of them, red, British, and blue will be the Frenchies. And then right, so I got a five, and you got a nine. Okay, so now, so I got a nine, so I won the initiative. Now, since I won the initiative, y- the opposing player is forced to place his commands. Now, we both get two commands, all okay. right? And obviously, working like a tree, if you choose to go into, I mean, you only have two choices, attack or reserve. Okay. okay. Uh if you choose a reserve command, you can work the tree where Delaborde is your senior commander. He's the parent commander, and he has two brigade commanders underneath him. If you assign Delaborde a command of reserve or attack, then both of those brigades uh, in his range, they will also get that. Gotcha. Well, you wouldn't have to burn one command for that. Gotcha. If you wanted the two brigades both to do something different, you would have to give those. And there's there's no... They don't have to be within command range of anybody uh, to be given their orders. Mm-hmm. So that's which I thought was interesting about this game, but it does at least it allows you to maneuver stuff. Um, and since we don't have to worry about initiative in this game, like you only got the two brigades, the Brits, on the other hand, um, I'm either going to have units in, two units in attack or reserve, and then everybody else is just going to be on a none status where they will be able to move. They'll be able to shoot and everything they do, but they cannot close on the enemy wall. And anybody that's in reserve, there will be a reserve movement phase during your opponent's play where you will take any units that are in reserve and you'll be able to reaction movement. Okay. So that's your differences. If you're in attack mode, you can move adjacent to an enemy and attack and assault. If you're in reserve mode, you cannot, but you can maneuver 
uh, in a reaction phase. And if you're none, you cannot close or close assault or anything. Okay. So how do we mark our commands? Okay, so oh, do we have command chips? Yeah, they're over oh. here on the uh, left-hand side. On the left? Okay. All right, so the, the initiative guy who wins forces the other player to drop his commands first. So that means you got to give your orders first, which is... So, I got certain either. They're in here. Where, let's see, where are the command chips? I was about to say, I see tactical stuff. I don't see... Um, I know the game on the reverse side. Well, let's start flipping stuff. So, Jason. So I don't see him either. Good point. Should so we're we're looking for attack orders, reserve orders. Yeah, and they're in the game. They're the big counters. Um, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Well, this is going to be awful embarrassing. It <laughs> looks like not all the assets like that's got loaded into the game. Actually, I got all the French stuff on my side over here. But do you have the, the uh, assault markers? Uh, well, the assault and charge markers are here. Actually, they got two different assault. Is the charge is an attack marker? Oh, that's for the cavalry. The charge is spent. That's interesting. Not here. Okay, well, I am going to have to yell at Blackwell to get the correct art assets to Uve. And obviously, I have not dug that deep into this module yet, so we are missing counters. Um, well, let's just fake it. Uh, yep. the, 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 How about the, if we use like uh, um, well, we we'll use assault for an attack. Well, marker. we're going to be using a lot of those. You, let's uh, let's do um. Let me find one we don't use here. I think one oh, of the one of I, the, for what's on the back of that green counter. Let's see. Uh, that's on fire. That uh, the black one. That's that's time. It's the same thing on both sides. Yeah. We could put posts. There aren't any posts. Yeah, There's... just, yeah, just, yeah, I guess one side just means attack. And yeah, put the blue side means attack, the red side will mean reserve. Okay. Well, I can't clone, so. Yep, yep. Give me some posts off the, that blue one there. Please. Thank you. Oops. Yeah, I only need three, so. You can only use two. We have two. All right, let me zoom out here so I can move these guys over. Since I can either give one to Delaboard for everybody, or yeah, one each one to on Delaboard, it it gives everybody under his yeah. command reserve status. Okay, right, now how do you what, how do you determine everybody under his command? <clears throat> well, so I can tell you. The, the, so here's Delaboard. He's first. He's the first brigade. I mean, first division. Here's Thomier, and here's Brenier. And that's uh, Brenier's the f um, the first brigade, and Domier's the second brigade. And you can tell so that those by the one slash one, two slash one, first brigade, second brigade, of first division. Right. So, but we're not going to use the second command. So I'm going to pop that over there. And the first command is going to be on De La Borde. Yes, but what is his command range? Is it is it five or the eight? I can. That's what, these are the things I'm going to forget. We're going to it's start. the five, I'm pretty sure. And the circle, yeah. And there's no, you don't have to worry about terrain. You just go five exits. All right, so that right. would make both. I'm actually going to put it by him instead of on him so we can see him. Yeah, that's what I was playing it. So that would, that would make yeah. all his two sub-commanders are, are, both, are both within five hexes. And then you've got a daisy, you know, you have the daisy chain effect like you do in a lot of games. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because they've got three each, so they got to have their guys within three. And cool. Cool. Okay. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to place mine, and obviously we want to get right after it. So, and it was funny because when I was using the solitaire bot, it did not give me what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and having having designed one of those, that's what you want. <laughs> 
<laughs> you wanted to not play like you. Oh, uh, you said we can't. Cl can we clone him? I'll I'll clone him. He, he, he's he's the cloner. Yeah, I'm for some cloner. in 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 some modules, and I don't know how to do this because I don't I don't do tabletop. Some in some modules and some in some games, anybody can has full administrative. Other games, they don't have full administrative. Yeah, there's a setting. <laughs> yeah, I just again I don't. I like I don't. to let everybody clone. Everybody should clone. <laughs> and I'm gonna put uh, Nightingale, and I'm gonna put. Uh, uh, he's Brigade 3, I want Brigade 3, and I want to uh, kill. Alright, so I got those two Brigades are in attack. Here they come! And oh, right. Keith, Keith, what did you put yours in? Attack or Reserve? Uh, Reserve. Oh, okay. Just wanted to make we're, sure. We're, we're saying that Red's Reserve and Blue's right. Attack. Okay, okay. Because, yeah, I mean, you're on defense, no point in you trying to move I out it, well, you don't want you don't want to charge through the trees and through the town and like right across the plateau that would be a great right into his idea. guns i could do it yeah, totally i will thing. do it if you dare me dare you i'd have a double yeah. dog dare you yeah. i want to i want to make a free game change here because all my units are in, in a column formation. my gone yeah <laughs> i kind of figured you may want to like i said not an optimal setup I when think, i set this I, scenario it's like, should, i'm trying to think if i if, if i should be you know like facing the hex corner <laughs> Uh, yeah, because they're all everything's in column. Right. Yeah. Welcome to the world of Napoleonics, where hex spines matter. Sure. Let's grab all these guys at the same time. There we go. See how neatly they all dropped. Actually, these guys here, I'm going to need all them to stay in job. So I'm going to give you guys a peek at what's underneath here. Mike on. So you can see what uh, he's up against. No. So this is cavalry over here. So I've got some guns right here. I've got some cavalry covering those guns, and I've got Delaborde himself. And then, oops, hang on, I missed one. Yeah, so then there's a, um, oh, I forget, these half battalions, full battalions for the French. Two, they're step two. So if you look on the counter, there's two diamonds in the middle, so they're two step. Yeah. And there's one diamond here that's one step. And it's like your guns are one step, for example. So this is kind of what he's up against. I think that's everybody uh, spread out, sort of. I should do it like this. Because that, that, uh, what is that? Uh, okay, okay, here's a question. So there, I'm looking at this red, my red unit, uh, the 4S, and in the center bottom is a bullseye, basically. What does that mean? Do we know? I'm sorry, which unit? The, my red my unit, unit in the back here, uh, here. Okay. Yeah, so the, yeah. in between the two, two Super 1 and the 40, is a bullseye, is a round L. Do, uh, I, think, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Hold on, I got it right here in front of me. It's the uh, fourth su suisse, whichever that is in French. And again, my apologies to the French speakers. For if Nicholas doesn't kick you out, we're good to go. <laughs> Nicholas and <laughs> Stefan, so. Right, it's Nicholas and Stefan. I don't, I don't see. Okay, uh, just, is he SED capable? Is that the. Oh, that's your. Um, Oh, that's that foreign unit. Where are they from? Oh, it's a different. It's just a different nationality. Yeah, but they each. Because I have a couple. I have more than one of them. That's why. Yeah. Uh, uh, just curiosity. What's on the back of it? Flip it over. He's no, dead. Because he's a one-step unit. What's the back of this? This thing circled me. That same thing. I don't recognize that one. I mean, it's got to be nationality. Yeah, it doesn't but have to be but. that like the cross saber and stuff on cavalry. Yeah, and, and like you know the the skirmishers on here. Uh, on here, the skirmishers are the one in the middle, and then you know, see the Napoleon thing for leader in the middle here. So I'm just wondering what that is. It's probably just like basic infantry without skirmishers or something like that. Yeah, because it's not in the ornament chart. The I'm talking about y'all. It's over there on the side of the table. 
Yeah, it's on the side of the table. I just have to zoom out to get to it. Yeah, I'll recognize that one. Let's see. I'm looking. Are you looking at me? No, it's not that one. Not that one. Yeah, that's terrain effects. That's charts. Ah, here we go. Wonderfully simple. Ornaments. Yeah, it's not on the ornament chart. How do you yeah, like that? No, it's not. Yeah, that's it's it's and it's just that one unit, I think. Well, I mean, it's it's a you know it's part of a formation, but battle cavalry, you know cossack, what? SED, SED, horse artillery, heavy artillery type of ornament. Other than that, I would guess it's. Leader uh, Yeah, because your other infantry soaring like that. Yeah. Somehow I think it's just normal. <laughs> yeah, maybe or Mr. Darty's going to have to come up with a reason. Oh, it's a, it's a Swiss French unit. <laughs> ah, there you go. Uh, so. Yeah, I knew, I knew there was Swiss, but I thought why he's red and the other ones aren't. That makes sense. Well, yeah, so, I mean, most of the, uh, this side is, I guess, right. and then this side oh. is French. So we've got a French brigade and a Swiss brigade, basically. Right. Swiss French brigade. All right. Now, when you're moving in this game, if I remember right, to change your facing, which I thought was kind of odd, it cost the movement point. But it didn't in the battalion and brigade games. But you have all the other formations in the battalion and brigade games that cost, right? Yeah. Well, for, yeah, for, yeah, formation changes and stuff like that, and you don't really have that. So, I mean, I, I'm not a lot. I think that this, the the game is. So, uh, I want to get. All right, no, let's go down the seats. But I think I've got all my stuff facing where I want it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. I can change the others as they're moving. All right, so orders in this first player turn rally phase. We're not doing that. No cavalry recovery. Artillery response. We're about that fatigue. Fire segment. Okay. So, in the fire segment, which I don't think we're going to be doing any with infantry, because nobody's in either... Nobody's, nobody's close enough. Oh, I know what we should do. As long as I do it now, if you want to, is you go ahead and get your skirmishers. All right, I so, still have skirmishers. Hang on, let me go grab them. So, the, the, the subscript numbers, the total number of the SKU you can have out on top of that, you... So they've got ones you can put one, and I need to get a bunch of duplicatable. Yeah. Right. There's SED on the back, and then, yeah. So yeah. I'll pick the red ones down here. Yeah, well, you should have the red ones. I should have the blue ones. And you can, skirmishers, you can pop at any time. And they don't have any facing, right? They're going to get all around, but when it comes to shooting, like the SKs, right. they'll shoot through their front, too. Remember now, I'm going to say it again, the last one I was playing was the battalion game, so... Skirmishers forward, TLIO. Oh, he's got two. Those Swiss, they're so efficient. One, two. Oh, he's got two as well, except... I, I, I guess we could have two covering the bridge. You can stack them, right? And there goes the pill. Oh, that's three. Okay, so... Now, do you place wow, the skirmish okay. markers on the unit or in front of the unit? Uh, Terry says he was because somebody was complaining about uh, it covering the units. Uh huh. Um, I kind of like that. So it still doesn't answer it, the question. It didn't bother me when I was playing, put it that way. So on the unit or in front of the unit? And you use a lot of these damn things. Uh, on the unit. The proper is on the unit. 
I don't have to use both, though, right? If I have two. Yeah, flip it over, you should have SK2 on the back of some of them. Uh, some of them have three. Actually, yeah. That's, that's yeah, you did the three, so I'll just stack them if I need to. But at this point, I don't need two from both of them. Yep, that's got the SK3. That's got SED. And what's really funny is when you get into close to song, you get to have the skirmishers run away. I have no skirmishers on that flank. That's just dumb. <sighs> like this load your repack thing. Yeah, the repack makes it nice and for us O C D gamer types. <laughs> Stay between the lines. <laughs> Why do I feel like we're playing Tetris? <laughs> <laughs> it's the sound. It's the sound effect they put on this floater stack. Uh, all right, that's about as neat as I'm gonna get. <laughs> yeah, I'm still working on mine. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. And, and and you know, Tabletop Simulator, there is a top view as well for your classic war game types. Um, but I like the 3D kind of angled view. It gives you the the total fear of the British Army charging across the valley. <laughs> I can't believe I don't have any skirmishers over here. Delabor's sitting there going, no, I will face them myself. There's none of my Portuguese. The poor guys, they can't even put out any skirmishers. Let's go and flip my big boys with my well, you got to remember, Keith, what you've got over here is artillery and cavalry. So Yeah, I know. If I you know. want if, if, if technically first brigade, if you want to shift those units around cuz like I said, I just put them out because yeah, that, that I mean, was there like a setup zone or Yeah, yeah there was a setup zone and first brigade is pretty much um, that line and I mean, it, it's a weird setup zone. It goes all the way to back, like here. It's all right. Like here, we'll just, and then over to we'll here. We'll put our noses then, in the noose because we want to. We want people to see how the combat works. Yep. <laughs> all right. So, so for the crowd, if there's skirmishers in the in the base game, you they can go on off at any time. It's just something you know. These troops were trained to do that on the fly, anyhow. All right, so I don't know if you have any, but I have these SED skirmishers down here. They have, they can shoot all over the damn place. All right, so I I've do. Three of those um, yeah, my French have that symbol, but I think it's a normal if skirmisher. You got an SED. You got to, you, you want to use the SED because of the uh, movement and the. Uh, yeah, I got the SED, yeah. so uh, I, I need to grab some SED. I need to grab an SED uh, thingy here. I think if I flip you, your SED. Yeah. So, uh, Devin, if you wouldn't mind, I'm bringing this. I'm bringing this uh, marker over. You if you wouldn't right. mind cloning this for me, please. Two, three should do it. Thank you. And so this one is an SED, and this one is an SED, and this one is an SED. It's funny that the Swiss have more skirmishers. They have two apiece. But the uh, um, the French have the SED skirmishers. I feel like. Yeah, you notice your SEDs, they get a minus two when somebody's shooting. Because there's so freaking many of them. Scattered yeah, so. all over the damn. Well, it's, I think yeah. what they. I, I didn't know it. I mean, I'm, I know some Napoleonic stuff, but I didn't know that, that these were entire units that dispersed into skirmish. Yeah, that's that's my understanding. So, yeah. So those units mm -hmm. on on Keith's flank, left flank, actually, that's what first brigade. Uh, they're not even in rank and file formation. They're just scattered everywhere in. Skirmish well, I've, got, I've got one. I basically I've got one. You one. Know, oh, okay. scattered. And I've got one in line behind them. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> um, this one is all scattered, but that's my flank anyway. This is the Swiss in the second brigade. And they have a, a subscript, superscript two on their five um, here, if anybody can see it. Uh, and that gives them two skirmishers, so I put two skirmisher markers. Although there is an SKE minus two somewhere. Yeah. So it's equivalent of the SED, but it just doesn't use as many skirmishers. 
Um, and if you look at the tiny detail on the markers, I don't know how far you, you can zoom in, um, Devin, or just you know use the uh, uh, the alt button, the alt, the alt button to show them. When you're on the skirmisher one, um, you see like two lines of skirmishers, but when you're on the SED, you see like a cloud of skirmishers. Yep. Oh yeah, so. I did not you notice that? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The artwork's really cool on this. Hmm. So it's weird because I'm you know test playing it. And the only perspective I have is mine. Yep. Right. So <laughs> exactly. I have three people in here looking at the stuff. It's right. I'll tell you more about it that you want to know, and I am no expert. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know what it is. I've, I've ended up, you know, just reading a lot of books on it enough to be dangerous, but not not as many, not as much as uh, um, Terry. Terry, not even close. Oh, oh my God. nowhere near. He brings up books, and I'm like, oh my God, there's a is there a book on that. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, you have one artillery battery. What's his inset color? Is it yellow or white? Hang on, I'll tell you in a second. His inset is white. All right, so his range is going to be six. Right. Yeah, he's got round shot and a, and it's funny. I looked at the uh, ammunition. I, I don't think the ammunition applies to the soldiers' game to this, but in the battalion brigade game, there's ammunition, and the French are like mostly canister. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if they're stacked, guns can fire together. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. If there's a you limit, there's a limit to how, how many guns you can have in a hex. Isn't it like oh, strength of we have two, to six, right six, six uh, I forget. I love all the charts you've got for this stuff, though. It's great. And where's that? He's got it all on these charts here somewhere. Stacking ones, there you go. Yeah. Uh, since we're going to be in LDT most of the time, it's 15. Um, medium density, heavy. I can never remember. Let's see. The villages here are medium. The only heavy density. Uh, there's not on any on this map. Yeah, so, oh, for, can, uh, for, the, for, vill oh. the village, the village of the woods, the, the village in the woods are medium density. The scrub is light. Right. Clear is open, of course. And, and then not be in line formation in the medium uh, density in the village. Yeah, and then stream. Is a hexide obstacle, right. not much of one, but no, no, it is actually pretty decent. Plus two move for infantry. Don't go running oh. cavalry across that. <laughs> yeah, I love that with the SD being able to. Um, it only costs them pretty much one movement point for every damn thing except <laughs> for stream. Yeah, and now I got to know what their damn formations are. Not here to move rates. Okay. All right, so... Well, see, that's the one thing about Napoleonic's level is that everybody marched at the same speed, so... <laughs> it's like you didn't have tanks, you didn't Not have any... Not strictly like speaking that. true. <laughs> well, there is a maximum amount that you can march at any one yes, given time. Yeah, so. yeah, but it's shocking when, you know, you have a group go, you know, two and a half miles an hour, like foot cavalry, like Jackson, which that's what they apparently... what they it to make the distances <laughs> they did in the time they did um i did do I, I everybody has a gettysburg game in their back pocket everybody has a water the game i have it too I don't know but any. mine's based on uh um formations move and have variable rates of movement depending on how how easily they're pushed how much they bunch up that kind of stuff and of course it, it, if you have an idea then a hundred other people have the idea and, and are published <laughs> So. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, so much for that idea. All right, let's see. Okay, so you pretty much square with yours? Um, yeah. I'm literally square with mine. Yeah. <laughs> Soon. So each of us has a different camera angle. We can vary what it is, but you only see Devin's. So currently, though, I am taking uh, Wellesley's view to see what, <laughs> see what he's going to do to me. <laughs> like, wow, there's not a lot of French there. So... Uh, scrub does not block line of sight. Does okay. give you a benefit. Um, okay. So, I, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the, uh, uh, the, the well, there's a, well, actually, we're not doing any regular fires. Nobody closed up but the artillery. We're going to do an artillery fire segment. And so I'm going to bust all my cannons out, which are going to end up rolling on the table under zero most of the time because of distance and terrain. So I'm just going to start over here. I'm going to start with this two, you um, Right there, all right. And I can tell you right now, with only a one strength point, he's always going to shoot. If you have the combat chart, 
a fire chart, which you, if you don't have one in front of you, hold it. I've got my hard charts out. I, I don't have one in front. I'm looking for the one on the table. So, you want uh, this is big time. Flip. It's right here, Keith. Where it's right here. Right. Give me an arrow. Thank you. Yep. Ah, there we go. I see it. And you say fire strength is two, right? What's that? And fire strength is two. Is that, is that, that right? That was one. That was one. That was one. Yeah. And I can already tell you, I'm going to be shooting into scrub, so that's going to be minus one. And if I shoot at a skirmisher, uh, it's going to be minus one, or an SED is going to be minus two, so it doesn't matter. The lowest you can go, it's going to be on the zero. Everything I shoot over here and everything you would shoot from there right now mm -hmm. is going to end up on the zero column. All right. So, so, so bas basically how the fire works in this game is you basically take the base firepower of the unit and then j you just apply the modifiers. And all yeah, the modifiers are right. Yeah, it's very simple how you figure out. And all the modifiers are right on this chart. Uh, fire strength modifiers, stacking FSM, target stack FSM, target stacking FSM. All, you just apply the modifiers and it's left and right column shifts up and down. So as Jeff was saying... You know, he starts off on the one column, but with all the column shifts, it's 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 going to go to a zero. Whoops, let's not do that. Um, I want to get rid of that ruler. Uh, hit the F1. Uh, yeah. F1. F1? Yep. <laughs> and then basically, you roll a percentile dice and just compare it and see which morale effect you get, or what effect you get. All right, so I'm going to, we'll see one right here. So I'm going to, I'm going to fire the gun. Uh, Tab, Jeff. Tab, buddy. No, I did it again. Alt. Right? Alt to Which blow it up, yep. Yeah. Hang on, I got oh, you. Ping is tab. There you go. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to fire that gun. And uh, should we go ahead and do a display of the uh, the range? The uh, yeah, if we got it. There were that, Dave, off the table or somewhere. Let's see if it's scaled. I mean, the. Uh... Might, not, might not be scaled properly. No, it should be. No, it looks properly. like it is. Yeah, I like that. All right. So, yes, we've got these great overlays. <laughs> drop it and zoom back in. Um, and this so one doesn't give a shadow. So, yeah. this uh, th These overlays, since they're transparent, don't have a shadow. But basically, yeah, but this is... Dev oh, go ahead. Yeah, you can you can change the camera view, Devin, if you if you click on the green of the, of the table. Well, change yeah. Change it to top down. And yeah. then you're looking straight down, and you can drop it. Yeah, but I mean, I've got it close enough because this is basically. Yeah, we're just looking to see. Yeah, we're just looking is. to see what the what the range and what the. Uh, did I did I mention the OCD part? <laughs> 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 okay, I'm so, not. I'm so, pretty so close. You all, because this now when I played this, and actually these guns are almost pretty much where I had them anyhow. I think I may have had them up on the hill right behind you guys, but on elevation, even so, he's in that split terrain hex there. I got mm -hmm. him at elevation and he's shooting off the left edge at right there. Okay. Alright. So regardless it's gonna be zero. And I brought a few dice over here and I'm gonna use I'll use the red as the tens. Okay. Alright, and I'm gonna pick them both up. I think. Yeah. yeah. Just dragging the marquee across both of them. There you go. And then hit R hit the R key. Oh he showed me that last night, yeah. Yeah. All right, so R, R is for roll. R is for Rolica. So you select them, and then you hit R for yep, roll. Yep, he did. He got a 77. 77, right. which so, sounds so higher. So if I go down the zero chart, now the way the fire chart works is, is so under zero, it's you got to assume that if you roll double zeros up to 50, you would have right. no effect. But I rolled right. a 77, so that's above 69, and it's below 93. Right. So right. you're going to roll a morale check on that unit, at minus 10. All right. So that was this here, right? Yep. And I'm going to explode the stack. So my morale is 41. I need a 41 or less. So you, right? okay. So you're going to, whatever you roll, take 10 off it. Okay. So, but I need a 40, I need a, I need it. Wait a minute. Do I need a 41 or more? I need a 41 yeah, or less. You need to be higher. Higher. Okay. So I need a 41 or more. I'm going to roll blue high. And 93 minus 10 is 83. That's well over 41. So they're good to go.
No, yeah, I'm surprised I, I, to see I, round shot falling over their head. But. I, I will admit, it, it, rolling the morale is what confuses me the most in this game because I can never remember, okay, do I need to roll high? Do I need to roll low? Oh, no, no, I need to roll high. And then the morale minus 10, taking that, is that from the morale number? It's So it, yeah. just from a personal standpoint, I have a hard time keeping the morale straight. Well, it, it took me a while, too, until I, you know, for, thankfully for this scenario, you know, I know from reading the Portuguese, we're not very esprit de corps type units, and you see their big high morales of fifty <laughs> compared to the thirty fives and stuff of the other units. So they have a chance of running away. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to down to the next cannon, and I'm going to shoot at that same unit. All right, I'm going to leave him exploded on my screen. All right, and I'm going to. It's pretty much the same thing. Oh. Baby, ooh, ninety-three. Whoa! Is so that's that gonna be, I don't know if that's uh, a ninety-three. I don't know if that's a ninety-three. Uh, cool. Yeah, I can see the little line on the bottom. Oh, I rolled well, red. You, I'm thirty-nine. I'm what sorry, you do, yeah, nine. but what you do is if you hold your cursor like right over the the die, it'll tell you what you rolled. Okay, I forgot my reds the first one. So that's yeah, so you rolled a thirty-one actually. A thirty-one. Right. Oh, damn, you're right. Damn it. <laughs> All right, so that's a miss. Big miss. Any hey. no effect. Two, three, boom. Six, seven, but you get to the sound effect. Boom. All right, so I, that's all the guns I got. You got a gun somewhere? Can you? Hit oh, me? I got a gun. I got a gun for you over here on my right flank. Um, I have also two in the white square. Well, he, he remember his was ones. Yours is a two. Mine's well, two. Second, Mine starts at a two, but yep. I'm I'm mean, fired downhill, so maybe I will be a two. Um, so I'm going to target uh, this nice stack here because I see it, and it's right across the valley. And uh, I'm the pretty sure there's the, where's the, gun at again? the guns right here, and I, I don't think there's any modifiers. No, but you better throw that thing on there because it's kind of weird. Throw what thing? Oh, the the template. Yeah, All right, here. Let me like grab that. Not like we'd see in any other game. Right. Here, let me drop it on there. So we need the other one, no, or we need to rotate this. Let me rotate. Yeah, that this. needs to be rotated. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you right. can't. You can't hit that guy. It's outside but, of your but, 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 but all right. Well, we'll hit the guy next time. <laughs> we'll hit the guy <laughs> here. My leader alone. <laughs> ah, he's not shooting at the leader specifically. <laughs> so you're two. You're going to be rolling on a. Oh wait a minute. Oh, it's long range. So long yeah, it's range, long range. Minus two, so it's yeah, gonna it's, it's still going to be the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Boop. All right, twenty-five. We didn't even hit the air, either one of us. Yeah, All right, not even close. Hear that? Right. <laughs> Movement segment, attack order space. So anybody I have in attack orders is what's going to move first. And that would be all of yeah. you guys, as long as. Are you only have two commands too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's in the soldiers game. That's all you get. Right, right. That's all right, okay. so I'm going to go gallivanting across here with my allied infantry. All right, and I'm going to start on the left side here. Actually, you know what? Let's start. Let's start. Start with the Portuguese. The birds. Are they in column? Or are they in line? These guys over here to the right, hills in column. Yeah, as I'd say. There's a reason for that. I'm sure there is. There's a wide open flank on my left. <laughs> that, yeah, that is that is one thing we should probably say. The facing of the unit determines if it's in line or in column formation. So if you're facing a hex point, you're in line. If you're facing a hex side, then you're in column. Yeah. Right. And for those of you not familiar with rank and file, line means you're all in a nice long line row, maybe four abreast, marching down. If you're in column, nope. oh no, no, the other way around. No, you just reverse that. <laughs> yeah, if you're column in, of fours, column of fours, <laughs> and you're usually marching, you usually can. Well, you march further if you're in line. You're about three rows deep, about sixty guys wide. <laughs> Unless you're the British, then you're two rows deep and about eighty guys wide. <laughs> I may be wrong on the eighty, so don't don't hit me hard in the comments. Yeah, it's it's something like that. Well, depending on how big the formation. Wow, is, right? you moving a lot faster than I thought you would. <laughs> what what's your so what so explain to what's what the moving allowance? What's the moving right, allowance that you're moving here? Have six. Uh, your French infantry move a lot better, um, but it's two for the village, 
everything mm -hmm. else. You know, unless I cross as I'm going up one of the slopes or something somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, one contour is they got it split. One contour is your it's your up and down call. So, you know, this guy here, he was just down, down. He just stayed down there. Yeah, what about the road? What does the road do for you? You get um yeah, I think you have to use it's three quarters, which that that I'm not gonna lie to you. That irritates the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> three quarters movement point irritates the crap out of me. Yeah, any time any time you're dealing with fractions, yeah, you just have to half. count. You just have to count fractions. You know, it's like yeah. three quarters, one and a half, two, two three. and a quarter, three. You love moving three because you know, you know you're going to get four X's. <laughs> and what I'm going to move now. What I really want to do is so that would have been. Let's, let me take it back here. So that would have been one and a half. I stayed on the road. That would have been three. Why do that? Now, yeah, I guess. No, one and a half, so I can just go two and a half. Mm -hmm. you know, so, I got to watch out for those SEDs. <laughs> so I'm I mean, they're to, skirmishers. Yeah, I'm going to go three, and then I'm going to change. I'm going to change him in line to the right. That's just two movement points. We're going to leave. I right, so I would have been one and a half, three. Four, five, and we're going here. Six. All right. I'm still not used to the shadow. Yeah, game. you just got to look for the shadow. Like I said, I, there really needs to be a master course in in how to deal with TTS. But once you start to get it down, it, it starts to come second nature. But it's just getting initially it down. Right. Get back on there. Take you to get off here. I see you talk to it just like I talk to it. The hell is that all about? You got yeah, you gotta you gotta marquee it and do it like it's RTS to select both of them. And then I'm gonna go four. And Only the shadow knows. Oops. Yeah. Alright. So that's five, six. He's done. So it's two to go into line from column? Yeah. Two to change for And the skirmishers just follow you. Yeah, they're like in front of the formation walking. Yeah, they're attached. It's not like you can really send the skirmishers off on their own. Oh no! I mean, you you would. I mean, you wouldn't send them that far because they're they're they are still your troops. Yeah, and yeah, you still yeah, gotta yeah. Call them when you need to. One, two, three, four. We're gonna fight, buddy. We're gonna fight right here. Yeah, but you gotta come cross. On. Come on, gotta come cross on two come rivers. Come across the two streams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that's gonna be the pain. Oh, would you? Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters, don't cross the streams. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they were really talking about. <laughs> Great, Nightingale and Hill. <laughs> oh my god. That's going to annoy the shit out of me. I'm sorry. What's going to annoy? Where you, you think you're grabbing the first oh, yeah. not? Yeah. It, like I said, it takes a little while to get used to, but... My bridge. My, My bridge. <laughs> oh, wow. So, one, two, three. And we said the stream was two, but then I would be going up a slope, so I don't have enough to go there. So, we'll stop him right there, maybe. maybe. Come on, chat. Oh, I know why. I'm looking at it straight up and down. That's an idiot. Oh, that's so much prettier. All right, so my attack movement stuff. <laughs> prettier. Are there points for pretty? <laughs> All right, let me move the rest of my unit, these. Um, I don't want to move them. Oh, these guys are sitting up on a higher elevation. So. Okay, also, I don't know if Delaborty has it, but uh, I have an extra... I think this one does. I have an extra commander, yeah, uh, Bathurst or whatever his name is, and he uh -huh. can be used to rally, apply his CBM, which is no, which he has a zero, so that's useless. But he, oh, well, he needs to get his butt forward. Yeah, he's gonna. And then Wellington, <laughs> yeah, here's Wellington. Sitting there. Wellington doesn't move. <laughs> I don't have him. <laughs> now, Midland. Now's our time. <laughs> let's move. Let's move these guys forward. I'm gonna get the guns up here. 
All right, so guns changing formation is... So you can't fire over your own troops with those guns, right? Well, see, that's where... Okay, so like right now, this guy here, mm -hmm. and where you're sitting up here on the higher uh -huh. ground, I'm uh -huh. saying he can shoot over. But when I get adjacent, that's not happening. See, this is what I'm saying, where if you guys don't like that or it doesn't translate well, you got to tell me, and I, won't, I just won't do it. But it, it, like right now, if I, if I said I was going to shoot him at that guy... I mean, it's okay with me as long. You know, I just I just seem to recall reading something in the rules that that friendly units block the units block. Right, shooting. Yeah, but, see, I've always had a in almost every game that I played where you have like slopes going up, and I'm right. down low. Why those? And I'm not sitting up in your face. Why right, these guns couldn't shoot because th this is where you have to have the designer uh, comment on it because the question becomes. You know, when you're within, uh, you know, 200 yards of the enemy and you're, are you lobbing shots over or friendly fire? Isn't. Well, <laughs> one, one thing you also have to remember from Napoleonics, they really didn't lob shots over their own troops. They didn't right. have the mathematical. I mean, by the time the American Revolution rolls around, the American Civil War, yes, we had a greater understanding of ballistics and velocity and, and angling the cannons up to shoot over. But you got to remember, the Napoleonics, it was pretty much, not, you laid the barrel down and just shot straight. Yeah, right. I mean, the round shot depended on, you know, a lot of times bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hitting the ground and bouncing through. Yeah. So yeah. if your troops are in the way, it doesn't sound like a good idea. But like, I, said, I don't. I don't have a problem with it. Game wise, I don't have a problem with it. I'm like, try anything, absolutely. And then we'll go to Terry and say, Hey, Terry, what's what's the score? Um, yeah, give us, yeah. And then we can interpret it from a you know from a what is really happening in the counter thing that he has all that knowledge of. All right. So guns for allied foot artillery four to change five six. Now, do you flip him to limber him, or do you put a limber marker on him, or do you just uh, move them into the soldier's game? One of the two steps, you have to put a limber marker on him. But these right. guys and again, the steps for, for everybody who's watching is that on the colored band in the middle, there's there's a diamond, or there's two diamonds, and each diamond is a step. So these are one-step batteries. Great. Yeah, basically two to four guns. And I think the British were using... Nine pounders, maybe? No, that doesn't sound right. The British, I think, I think the British had the six pounders, and the French had the right. nine pounders. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's see. I've been playing a lot of ACW here lately, and I just got done uh, playing Chickamauga, the campaign for John Tiller, and a lot of the Confederate cavalry or Confederate artillery were like two pounders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like really. <laughs> What they can, what they had. Yeah. <laughs> they had what one one artillery factory in Richmond or outside of Richmond. Yeah. Well, and it's kind of funny. Even even uh, as I was playing through the final battle of Chickamauga, a lot of the Confederate artillery was just labeled as Napoleonic. So, right. <laughs> now, granted, I did have some six pound rifled artillery that that was very very effective, but you know that they. I had like one battery of them, and they couldn't be everywhere at once. So. Just play Gettysburg, you get the Whitworths. <laughs> oh yeah, to shoot seventy hexes across the terrible sword. <laughs> it made the I map of terrible sword, sword worth. <laughs> okay. Now they now. They can move even though they didn't have an order, or they had an order they didn't yeah, know about, or what's called a non status. So they really moving is pretty much all they can do, and they can defense a fire if somebody moves into one. Okay, how close can they? They can't enter the enemy zones of control, yeah. basically. Yeah. No, they can't move adjacent, yeah. or they can't assault. Put it that way. Right, right. These guys here, I don't, you know. So yeah, so, that okay. that is the one thing that even if you don't have the orders or for some reason a a, a formation is outside of the command range and doesn't follow uh, doesn't fall under its higher commander's orders, you can still at least do something, which is you know basically move and defensive fires. So. Right. I I know it's 1808, but I'm feeling very little round top here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
I'm feeling like I need, you know, the second U.S. sharpshooters in the woods across the street. <laughs> no, no, you will Speaking not of Gettysburg. Berdans, no Berdans. You've got, no, i got okay. You cannot have Berdans. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your Baker rifles in the 60th. Uh, <laughs> oh, real quick, oh, it is, uh, we are an hour in. Do either one of you guys need to take a quick bathroom break? I'm, as soon as I move. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. as soon as you move, we'll take a bathroom break and I'll get something to drink. Okay, and, cool. Uh, not a problem. We'll be back in... Back in two or back in five? It's your choice. Yeah, whatever. However long it takes you to get back. I just need some water because I've been sweating it out here watching the whole freaking <laughs> British army come my way. Oh, please. It's it's Because Delaborde's like, ah, I have an idea. <laughs> it's, well, first of all. Perhaps we should just sit here on this hill <laughs> and let them come at us. You've, you've got a, a Polish brigade. Okay, now granted you've got four British brigades, but, you know, that's <laughs> they're not full strength brigades. No, for the British, they are straight for gates. <laughs> what were you fighting? But you have such wonderful cohesions. <laughs> oh, look at these big yellow guns back here. I don't want to look at those big yellow guns, except from that distance. Yeah, the problem is they're <laughs> way back there in the back. They're, yeah, they're their strength command. is two. So the yellow guns mean what? They can they're just their, they're what? They sh they oh, they're the big ones. They're the big ones, okay. yeah. So strength of two, but they fire it out there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I know since some of the French have these ones that have four in that white box, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, but not here. <laughs> no, not here. <laughs> I just have my pair of nine pounders. Ping, 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 ping. Well, nine pounders are nothing to sneeze at. I mean, especially if you get close and are shooting out nine pounds of canister. Hmm. But there's no canister in the soldiers' game. Well, I didn't say there was. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, the one French cavalry unit they have is actually pretty powerful. Now, uh, these guys over here, uh -huh. they should have been here. And they're the train, I, right? They're supposed they're... to be on our road. I could be oh, wrong. that's right. Yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, I would Sorry. think. I would think. They're not cross-country kind of vehicles. What? why they're fighting at the spot because they need that road yeah and why i'm even moving them up i don't know because they serve zero purpose other than victory points for the freaking french so, oh, well, so bring them so, on up so why are you moving them up <laughs> because he's got the whole freaking british army in front of him protecting him that's why <laughs> there is a psychological element to warfare Sir Arthur, what are we gonna do with cardboard warfare uh, the nose and the cavalry has a whole bunch. So, yeah, and before anybody complains, the game is Napoleon versus Wellington. You know, first victories, Wellington versus Napoleon. Yes, we know Napoleon was not here. It was his brother, uh, Joseph, that was running things here. And Wellington wasn't, or uh, Wesley wasn't the Duke of Wellington yet. Yeah. So, but it's, it, we, we know that it's just, it's basically Napoleon's, Battle strategies versus Wellington's battle strategies. So, uh, let's see. I want to, like I say, from transitioning, I want to look at the um, ah, da, 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 because it wasn't on the turn or the soldiers' rules about. No, it's not okay. So your morale check DRMs are not. See, there you have in the other two games where you move into certain terrain, mm -hmm. you have morale problems, but it's not in the soldiers game. Yeah, it's not in the soldiers game. Well, and, that, and I mean, cool. that works. build into it, you know. I mean, right. All right, so all right, that is the end of uh, phase three D, which is movement. So now you go to three E, which is reserve segment, and that's the non-phasing player. So if you want to move. Well, do you guys want to go to the bathroom first? Take a quick yeah, break? Yeah. 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 And also keep in mind, too, that these skirmisher units now that we have within two hexes of each other, mm -hmm. they will be shooting at each other if they're in that same position in the fire phase next time. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pay more thick. More thick. All right. I'll be back. Yep.
Quit cheating. <laughs> oh, I forgot the guys are all doing down at Battles and Brews. Was that this weekend? Yeah. Napoleon, nous sommes ici. Wait, I'm on the head side. <laughs> Well, it's probably a good thing you're going up to Gettysburg this weekend, then. Yeah, I, you know, they keep trying to get me to come out there to march to victory. Well, I think it would be kind of fun. I'm too fidgety. Yeah. yeah. I know how. That's why I'll go to Gettysburg tomorrow. I'll, I'll be four or five hours. And I'll come home. And I'll go back up in a few days because yeah. I know that no possible way. I'm a solo player. I mean, I'm not, you know, not that I mind playing with somebody. It's just that I just seem to chug along a lot better. Yeah, we don't have to no, wait for those pesky other players. <laughs> All right, well, we're back, so... So it would be reserve movement if you're going to move anything. Um... You got... The cavalry? That's skirmishers for cavalry. Oh, that's the rifleman. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. The green jackets. Oh, what do you have on your flank? The American rifles. <laughs> frack, <laughs> frack, frack, frack. Um. No, they can charge my guns for all I care. And my cavalry. I'm not even sure what to do with them because they're they're basically doing what they're supposed to do, which is cover the flank, right? Um, and covering the guns. So, I think what I am going to do actually is move. Uh. We do it this way. It's one thing I like about this, you can rearrange your stack. I'm going to move these guys into here. To oh, have I some extra that. Dev didn't show me that. I mentioned it that you could manipulate when oh, it was exploded. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. That's how I, that's how I restack things. Let's <laughs> open it up and restack it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the only move I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm presuming it's not wise to send my skirmish. I can't send my skirmishers off of me. Into the ravine. Uh, yeah, and Terry, he was talking about putting them in the hex in front just so that you can uncover the units, but I don't... T I, I'm afraid I would get confused if I did that. Yeah, which skirmisher belongs to which... Yeah, which one belongs to which, yeah, which, one belongs to which one, exactly. Which parent so. formation, yeah. yeah well... I, th I think this works. We're going to we're gonna get into this fight pretty quick here, so... All right, well, I'm done this... Res is it reserve movement I was just doing? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so, now so I'm done my reserve movement. Your, now your turn would come up, so we go to second player turn, which would be uh, the recovery segment, which you don't have to worry about any of that. Now we go to fire segment. Okay? And in the fire segment, it is... Oh, there's the 95th rifles. I don't know if we alternate or if I can't remember. I think it's you fire everything. Or something like that. Let me see. I like how this rule book has a reference. <laughs> The actual reason the book, and I should have probably have the book sitting in front of me. Yeah. Oh, that's what I should have done there. Nah, yeah. there are skirmishers. We definitely need some solid stuff back there. Phasing player may fire all of his units that are eligible to fire. So now this is where you get. Shoot! Yeah, so, okay, so now you can fire everything you got, including your cannons. All right, well, well, we'll start on the right and go left, then. Don't think cannons can fire, remember, right, with the infantry. Because if I'm right, it's only... Wait, you just told me they could. And I know. No, stacked cannons can shoot together. But I don't think when they're shooting at uh, short canister range, I don't think they can be combined. Nah, he's, yeah, Keith, he's talking about uh, combining infantry and cannon fire oh. together. Into the oh, oh I see. Yeah. Well, you fire so many points, so... I, I kind of like the way he Because you fire by the hex, right? Yeah. Remember now, though, if you've got skirmishers, your line units aren't shooting. Your skirmishers are. Oh. 
because your, your line units can only shoot to the adjacent hex. Your skirmishers can shoot too. Oh. What, what's what's each hex? 50 yards? 125. 125? So skirmishers yep. can do 250? They can shoot. French skirmishers? Yep. SED and the SCTs. Well, you gotta assume you gotta assume that the skirmishers are not actually just all physically in the same hex. They are considered to be in the. Oh, they're hex. spread out in front. Of, yeah, that exactly. makes more sense. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That works for me. So I mean, basically, the skirmishers from both of these lines. I mean, they're probably intermixing on this little island in the middle. Right. Here. Oh, he's got two battalions with him. Hmm. All right, uh, are we ready for me to shoot? Are we? I'll go left to right instead of right to left. So my skirmishers here are going to open up on hill. Why can't I? Why isn't my tab working? Uh, hit F1. No, I just had it selected. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's the shot there. So um, I've got, you know, skirmishers, SED, the whole formation, right? Yep. Um, what do I use to shoot at him in terms of strength points? All right, so the SEDs shoot with, you have a number in a box, a pink box. Mm -hmm. That's right, four. That's the fire strength. Yeah, that's right, four. And you're going to be shooting at a skirmisher, so there's a minus one for the skirmisher, and I think I'm in that village over there. Am I right? Uh, uh, yes. Right, and that's going to be my, so you're going to be minus two, so you're going to be shooting at two. Okay. Which is not bad, actually. Not bad. Really. 96. Oh, but you're... Ooh. Like, oh, you took a walk. That's going to be an M15. 96 is a leader casualty, too, isn't it? It's, yeah, you have to roll for that. So Unmodified 95 to 99 oh, is a leader M15. casualty, yep. Well, what did I just roll? 96. There you go. So, so you will M15. have a... Leader casualty. Yeah, let me roll for the. Oh, was that an automatic leader casualty? Uh, I don't know. It's automatic. I think. Let me just see if the chart says it. Or is there a roll? It says. Uh, unmodified, not even leader casualty. Right. And then cult seal losses hand to hand assault on a charge defender. Flip the chart and see if it's on the other side. I only had one it is not. I have to check the rules on that one. Uh, dice roll of 95 to 99 causes a leader casualty in the target hex. If multiple leaders are present, randomly choose which one becomes a casualty. So it is an mm. automatic. So oh. he's been replaced with Mackenzie. As long as I think Mackenzie Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. So I'm going to roll with my morale, assuming there's no leader at all because you killed him. So we're going mm -hmm. to be rolling on that guy that's a 30 right there. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing modifying it yet, so give me red. Red's top. Well, you are at a minus 15 for... Yep. That, no, that didn't do anything. No, it hit R. Oh, and that should do it. Hit R, okay. Yeah. Oh, that. There, 90. Whoa, you made that. Pretty good. <laughs> Stand! You'll stand your ground. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so now there were two. There were two. There were two units in the hex. You only affected one of them. Why is that? You roll for so the kind of like what they call the leading unit in games. Yep. The top unit is the only one that rolls for morale. Yep. You guys are better. Okay. Um, my next stack, which is. Here, uh, I have skirmishers there from Brenier. Um, the strength of the top unit skirmishers is four in pink, right, minus pink. two f for the minus one for your skirmisher, um, minus two for my SED. No, 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 that's what I no. shoot. You. Oh, that's what you shoot. You. So, minus one for your skirmisher is three, and then you're in the village, so that's two, uh, just yeah, like the other one. one? Yep, the same one. Uh, no, the next one over. Oh, this one here. here, let me uh, yeah, this one here. All right. Okay, so all right, let me see what yep. I can do here. It's the two column, and honestly, if you, if you take a look at it, 72. there's not there's not that many column shifts, 
So it's real easy once you've played it for a while to to just automatically do. It's like, all right, for some reason I got a six. So it's a minus four for other reasons. But plus two, so we, you know it's a four. But anyway, right. what'd you 72, roll? 72. Yeah. 72. Seventy-two. Seventy-two. That's an M ten. Yeah, I'm blue high. So that's a morale check with a minus ten. And your oh, 60 minus 10 is 50. You're good. Yep. Because you were rolling against a 37. All right. My next one is going to continue down the line to hit the next, the 29th. Yeah, but this one's going to be your... On He's the, in the open, though. Yep. You're on the three you column. Minus one. All right. Blue high. 30. Nah, it's not going to be What was your pink strength? Was that the SED oh. unit? Uh, hang on. Yeah, it was SED. It was a four. So you're rolling a so, three? Right, a three with a with a thirty. Alright. So uh, oh that's a, a straight up morale. Uh yeah, straight up morale check. Eighty. Alright. Uh Commando Solo 193 has joined us. He's saying thank you for streaming this, learning so much. I'm glad you're getting something out of this. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying. Yeah, we're trying. Well, I think once I played like three or four turns of the Soldier's game, it just it started to flow. Yeah, right. the, 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 big, the biggest thing is, like I said, the, the column shifts for, for the combat. And, right. you know, once you've played it a few times and know what the modifier, it's like... It, it, quirky example i used to play battletech back in high school it's like all right it's, who didn't who yeah, exactly didn't? <laughs> you know all right i moved this many hexes he ran this many hexes hold out whatever to this day if i were to sit down and play battletech i could probably still take into account every single modifier that goes into shooting at somebody and it's the same with this you do it enough it just becomes rote all right so my next one down here to continue the theme, uh, his, he, he, well, let's see. All right, so here's something weird. He has on his counter, and I'm going to put the counter on top um, just to um, show you guys what it looks like. And then, Devin, you can expand that. Yep. So this is the one of the Swiss ones. It's, it says it has skirmishers because it has a five with a superscript of two, right? right? But I don't see a pink value. No, so skirmishers. Okay, so SK units will shoot SK. The SK. Okay, all right. So there we go. All right. So let me put this back in order, and uh, I've got two SKs because it has two. So the strength is two, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we shoot straight across, straight across at Nightingale. So again, minus one for uh, the scrub. It, right, one for the scrub. So uh, yeah, it's a one. Right. Sounds like about right. blue high. 16. 16. Oh, you were to have to look. On a 1 is a nothing. Yeah. Not a... And then the next one is going to go on this stack here. And the, it, we're in the theme of, you know, um, <laughs> going down the line. Uh, I believe he is the same. Yeah, he's strength of 2. Uh, no, but you have your leader. Your CVM oh. and your leader. Oh, I have the CVM. Okay, so the CVM leader is. Let me, let, me put, let me put him on top so the guys can see here. This is Tomier. Tomier and his C CVM, his combat value modifier, is the one in green there. So you get a column ship for that. So I'm back up to two then. Now, here's a question. It's firing across yeah. a bridge. Does the bridge have, have see, a modifier? See, I don't see. I don't think so. No, uh, no, the, the, no, the, the, no the, that that was a kind of a rhetorical question. I was asking it for the people who might have that as question. Yeah, no, the bridge, the br there is no modifier for the bridge. Oh, I mean, you were playing both sides. I got it. <laughs> twenty. I don't think so. I don't well, think hang on. So. Twenty on what? Uh, you had what? A two on or a three? Two. Twenty two. on a two. Yeah, nothing. Right. You needed at least a thirty-one. All right, and so then this guy. Is going to fire at the same guy. And it's basically... I don't have a leader in this one, so this is just the two. And you don't really have a defense, so it's just the two. Two minus one. So that's a one. Wait, well, yeah, one for the skirmisher, so... Roll. Blue high. 23. I don't think so. For a two, no, you needed a 31. All right. 
And then these guys are no skirmishers, and the guns are allowed to shoot or not allowed to shoot? You shoot your guns. So shoot your guns. Depending on what you're mm -hmm. shooting at. Yeah, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna basically shoot at the ninety fifth rifles here. <laughs> I gotta because they're in the template. Gotta find that chart. No, right here. Okay, so are those white or yellow? Those are white background. Uh, the guns, uh, they yeah. they're definitely white. Yeah. Okay, so you're shooting at the effective range, so you won't lose anything. It'll be whatever the strength is. Right, which is two. Right. All right. Four. TLA. Oh, but I'm, you should, which unit you shooting at? Oh, the top, the top unit of the 95 rifles here. Uh, the SED in there is a minus two. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, then that's a one. So one with a 34, I don't think I got anything. All we did was expend ammo. Yeah. Now, the only thing I can do would be to return artillery fire, but I think we've determined that that's not going to happen because of the way artillery... You know, it's funny, too. That now, that's a good point you brought up because I think about the Civil War, too. You know, unless... So this game here... This game, that's another game I'm playing. They have howitzers. Oh, well, yeah. Also. Well, yeah. They're, yeah they're, howitzers, they're... But howitzers are built to do that. And yeah. so when you have... Uh, think of the different ammo types. Like, round shot, the most effective way to use it is to knock down files. So you, you use it low to the ground and, and skim it. That's right. why ground conditions are always a concern. Um, canister's a giant shotgun. Again, you're low to the ground. You're not firing over or anything. Right. Shell, they would fire over because they would calculate the fuse length so it exploded over their target. Right. Well, um, and see, that that is the thing. There are no howitzers. I don't think there are any howitzers in this I don't think there's battle. any howitzers here. But no, they're all smooth bores. Terry, Terry has got the rules in here for howitzers because other games in the system will take that into account. And I even think he's got the rules in here for the rocket artillery. Again, not that there's any <laughs> rocket artillery. Yeah. Wind Erratic games. rocket artillery. Yeah. <laughs> so is it is it going to be some line of sight digging, or is this a question we need to pose to Terry? Because I hate to ask him a question and then the damn, damn thing's in the rule book. Um, to be honest, only because I don't have the rule book in front of me. I only read it once. And I only went over the charts once, but it's just my own familiarity with with you know having, having read it. I, I think I read, you know, units do block was what sticks right. in my head as the shortcut, um, and that makes sense to me. Um, but if there's an exception because of you know you're fire, you can fire round ship over. It's just it's not going to be particularly effective. Um, right. You'd fire. I, I presume you would fire something explosive, and only the British had that. Um, right. Oh, and also in this game, too, your artillery, before they shoot, they can turn 30 degrees. Oh, nice. So. Cool. Oh, yeah, it does. All right, does. so I'm, I'm done my shooting. All right, and I'm not, I don't have any cannons that are going to fire back. Okay. So, uh, movement, or fire's done, so now you go to, which you, okay, so you're not going to do anything because everybody you had, I think, is in reserve. Is your cavalry right. unit a separate unit? Uh, be part of first corps. No, it's part of first corps. First division. Mm, okay, everybody yeah, it's, yeah, it's first division. It's the divisional cavalry. Yeah. You don't have any movement that can be done. Nope. There's no charges, no assaults. We just completed the whole turn. Woohoo! Yeah. Right, so now that my leader that was here, this is when he would be replaced. Mm hmm Kill leader, but I didn't use his modifier for the morale roll anyhow. So. Right. Um. Uh. The, the end of turn phase. Okay. We got to a whole turn. Yeah. Now, would it, you know, skirmishers that come off at any time, but they wouldn't come off during the end of turn phase, right? Now, usually when you're doing your movement, that's when right. you take them okay. off at any time. So my, think, my thinking head brain is going, they're close enough that it may be time to pull the skirmishers in, but I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, so we would we would move on to, what, do we want to go? Are we going some more, or how much time have we used? Uh, we've got... Uh, we've, we used an hour and a half. Yeah, we've we, we've got about a half hour left. Honestly, probably though, since we did one full turn, it's probably a good place to cut it, so we don't go through a partial right. turn uh, and then have to wait until uh, until two weeks from now when we're going to forget everything, anyways. So yeah, honestly, the next, the next turn is going to be some serious assault movement. Well, so. yes, yes, and and the initiative is really going to you know Keith wants to win the initiative on this. So. I always want to win the initiative. What are you yeah, talking about? Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> I. I, I Talk, talking what, what to Terry, sometimes off. you don't. What you know, off is you would take the your orders. Oh, take your orders off, right? 
Oh, maybe we can get a new uh, version. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. that <laughs> Once, work. Uh, yeah, it, when, yeah, it when, doesn't when, work because of, of the behind the scenes of tabletop. When, when, when Uve updates the module, it doesn't update any of the saved games, unfortunately. Right, you have to so. you have to reset the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, but okay. Yeah. So since we do have a little bit of time, uh, anybody have any thoughts and opinions on uh, on what Keith? What? Give me. Let me know what you're thinking. Oh, I I like it. I mean, I I can feel the 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 graininess of it. I am totally terrified by. I'm literally terrified by <laughs> Jeff coming at me with this lie because I'm like, I mean, of course, I'm I'm very biased because I read the Sharps books and they're very you know British centric. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like the French were just they usually had numbers. Um, My God! And at, I'm just looking at this going, I really really what I I really interested in when he comes across the streams. Um, because I want to see how that works. Because right now, I like I said, like you said, Devin, in the beginning, it's like it's a really strong position. You know, we're sitting here on top of a hill, and they're coming through woods, and it's not great. But on the other hand, they have you know a potentially overlapping position on my left, um, riflemen on my right to harass where it, there it's open, even though it's on the hill. Uh, and I, I'm not I'm setting aside the two brigades that are coming in behind me at some point, but. Um, it, yeah, it's a tough fight. I'm really interested in how this turns out, but well, the feel is really good, though. It's really easy. Um, it, it's it's really straightforward, and yeah, it brings back memories of, of games where you know <laughs> it's like you've got column shifts and that's it. You don't have to worry about all that other stuff. My God, um, I love the tables are really clean. Um, I love the map. I just keep staring at the map. Going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the map is nice. map, the map is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and, and so it's, the, I, the morale system is okay. So yeah, I mean pretty apparent that once we go to the next turn you're gonna i'm gonna be in your face yeah and we're gonna start to see so like you if you if you one of your sed units shot at me and they caused a morale hit and mm -hmm. i failed the morale roll i would only go to a d status a disruptive status but right if i was in your face in an assault and you a uh, defensive fired at me right that status if you cause a morale hit on me it's increased by two yeah, you get two levels down yeah. on that. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 a fight once you get in there because that's what they're trying to do is get in there and disrupt with the, you know, with the musket fire. Well, and until I like the point where hear, Terry put it right to the, you know, you know, you always hear, and I didn't know it for years, but you know, melee hand to hand combat was really not big of a thing. Yeah. In the American Civil War, they would get toe to toe and fire muskets at each other, and he covers that. I mean, I'm not going to get in the hex with you if we don't. If 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 we don't pull it off with a close assault where one of us clears their hex, right, we're we're right there toe to toe still. Yeah. So and it's really cool. I, of course, when I played this uh, on my table back there, how when units like I had two coalition units or three coalition units that their first engagement they ended up routing. Mm -hmm. and wow. When you route, you run way the hell away. <laughs> yeah, you're going three hexes. So. So. And if you're cavalry, you're going six axes. Yeah. And because you can run faster. Well, and, and that, that, that's one of the things I like about Terry's system is that you're not really going to be killing a lot of units. There might be the occasional step loss. You're driving them from the field of battle via via the morale system, and he's right. got so many. Uh, it's it's shaken, broken, routed. You know, he's got several steps yeah. in mm -hmm. there, yeah. and I like that granularity rather than. I mean, there's a lot of other systems that have been out there. It's like, all right, you you get shot at, you fail your morale, you're routing. Yeah, no, that's not exactly how it works. That's a very simplistic way of looking at it. So, but yeah, I, it's it's because when Terry and I played, I think. I think I had one one step unit that was killed, and all the other units from either one of us that were driven off were driven off through uh, morale checks. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it re we never did give um, the we never went to the depth of the victory conditions for the branch because you hit, there are other options. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, not just, trapped we're, here. We're, I'm not trapped here. We're, <laughs> no, um, we're we're just showing how to, showing each other how to shoot at each other at this point. Yeah, uh, pretty yeah. much what we're doing. Yeah, if you so if you can, it's a it's a, a so a decisive French victory in this game is for you to voluntarily exit all surviving units off the south edge of the map by the end of the game without any step losses, and you inflict three or more step losses on the Brits or the Portuguese. <laughs> three. 
three not, step losses. Not tough, but I mean, not thirty, three. <laughs> because it's hard to inflict step losses. It is. It is I hard think about to inflict combat effectiveness in my Civil War games. I mean, you got to cause mass amount of casualties to to knock a unit ineffective. Well, three steps in this game. Is, I'm not gonna lie to you. It is not that easy. No, it's not. But think think about what they're using. They're using smooth bore muskets mm -hmm. that the effective range of these things people say oh the effective range is 100 yards not really yeah, the effective you could, units yeah. used it at 20 <laughs> yards you right. know because there really wasn't much chance of hitting stuff unless you aimed low and just had a mass of bullets and they happened to hit stuff well, and also but to do that takes the morale that people talk about to stand in that line and I like the way Terry has integrated the fact that, you know, there is a big difference between assault, where you are pulling up and firing, and then there's this, this smoke, so you don't even know what you're firing at after the first volley, and cold steel, which is where, you you know, the British would fix bayonets at 20 yards right. and start walking forward, now, just walking here's... forward. And if the, you know, the French sin, if they're, and they're like, the cold steel is if they, they don't move. But nine times out of ten, when you got that close with cold steel, whoever was on the other end would go, I think we're going to back up about 100 yards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in this game here, you don't go. The only time infantry to infantry goes cold steel is if the defending unit is in a built-up area like those two right. village, or they're in a post. And I don't right. think there's posts in this game. Yeah, there's no post. But like Ugamal is a post. Yeah. And and so, you know, that's yes, there's cold steel in there. There's, you know, the hold hold them off of the in the in the in the in the, in the, the I would say the portholes, but the you He's know the, really the firing holes. something with this, I think. And I, now Grant, I have not played Labatai yet, and I know he did some Labatai stuff. And yeah, I've got it, a couple. So I, I played Labatai and uh it I think this is smoother. Yeah. It's not to say they don't have their, but they, they're both really good. They just are, you know. I can I can feel Terry's work, and it's like um, this. I just think this is like it, it, like a second take on anything. It, it kind of hones off some some of the edges. I mean, that's why I think Labatai went through so many evolutions. Uh, and now I forget what it's called. What's the latest rules? The there's a simpler set of rules that really works well. Which French um, thing? The Marie Louise or something. Like yeah, that. the Marie Louise rules. Um, I have heard are very good. Um, and I like them both. I really do. I mean, I had I had so much fun playing. You know, we were playing a double blind. I'm actually, afraid, game. Though, if, if, he, yeah. if he starts popping out, a de uh, Deb, not hear me. I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> I want dibs on if he starts to pop a new one. The playtest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no he's, worries. I'm sure no there'll worries. be no lack of playtesters. Oh yeah, he's got he's got, like, he's got like he's got like five other titles that he's planned. Um, and he's got a friend of his who is willing to do Borodino using this same system. So, mm. yeah, this is, this is, this is not some fire and forget that Terry is doing. This is, this is an entire oh, he's library. Got yeah. yeah, he's got oh, the yeah. design for the system behind it. It's oh, just yeah. a question yeah. of executing well, titles. I, I compare this, in Mordrum and I talk about all of this all the time, Todd and I, that the, I can, and granted, this is nothing like it. But I compare the way this plays to the way great campaigns of the American Civil War, the base game, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, get, you get fulfillment out of the base rule system in any one of the scenarios. Right. right? Like in GC, you don't have to play the advanced rules. Right. Right. And, and I, you know, I understand in the, so the transition to the battalion rules is mostly command. That's like 98% of the transition. And then when you transition into the brigade rules, it's the formation movement, the grand strategic type movement stuff, and I, yeah, I mean, I, I read some stuff and see how the Napoleonic force is deployed, but then I turn around, and I see these ones, and I'm, of course, watching Eric and then play La Bataille, yeah, and learning it playing Ney versus Wellington from SPI that these units didn't move across that battlefield with shoulder to shoulder. I mean, regiments shoulder to shoulder, maybe the regiment itself, and they would have gaps between companies or battalions. But sure. though multiple regiments were not standing next to each other. And and to me, I think to myself, my God, that just puts gaps. But you know what? Those those regiments or battalions might not have been, they probably weren't 200 yards apart. You know, there wasn't that big of a gap. And I think what Terry's done here, because, you know, I look at the map and I see that line of British units, I'm thinking my, the image says, oh, they're just shoulder to shoulder in a line. And I don't think so. I think he handles that separation by the morale system and how it affects adjacent units. It's not as severe as it is in some games. Right. Right. So I, I'm loving this. So when, you know, 
Well, yeah, let's, so. just, let's just put it this way. Um, I've already seen the maps and the counters for his next title. So. <laughs> Are you spilling, or are you just teasing? Nope, I'm just teasing at this point. Um, <sighs> right now, I, honestly, we would we would probably be in the production of his next title, uh, except for the simple fact that, well, we GameFound won't let us put anything more up until we, you know, fulfill the three titles that we've already got through GameFound right now, and that's not going to be till October. As soon as we fulfill... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see the next game found for his next one within three or four months. Wow. I mean, that's how, that's how far and how, how much work he's already got into the, his follow-up titles. And he's working on, he's working on one that we're, that we're thinking of making as kind of a starter kit for his system, but it's going to be covering, uh, Washington at Trenton during the Revolutionary War. Oh, there you go. Will it yeah. be based around this type of system? Yes, it'll be this system. A couple little, a cup, a couple little changes for because AWI does have a little bit of tactical changes. Weapons were slightly better, but yes, using this exact same base system with ever whatever needed to be modified for uh, American Revolution. Probably won't take that much modification. No, it would not much practical difference between the way. It's just more rifles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> few more, few more, well, few more rifles. But you know, the units still there. You know, smaller. brown bats. Same, same weapon for the British. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, awesome. but yeah, there's 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 there's, there's there's more to come. That's all, that's all I can say. At this so this point. is this is Rolica and Vimiero and. That's what's in this box. Yes, yes, yes. And you got okay. a West Ridge spike too. That's yeah, the, the West Ridge, which is added on, which is gets added onto the Vimerio map. And the, and, and he's put in he's put in a couple hypothetical scenarios, and he well, it's kind of the cool thing about it. He set it up. It's like so, so a couple of the scenarios are like, well, what if the French approached from this direction instead, or what if the English held their reserves for later? So there are some variants and some non historical. Uh, hypothetical stuff that he's added in, which uh, you know, we're war gamers. All all we do is hypothetical because as soon as we move our first unit, we've broken that's from that. history. So well, that's assuming oh. the first unit started in an historical spot. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, and the AI, the bot, is really really good. Um, it, it his his variance to like the Vimero, even roll roll guys. If you're using the AI bot, which he uh, he answered a lot of questions for about that. You he the variants are battle plans. Right, right. You roll a dice at the start of the scenario for the AI player, and you'll get a battle plan that tell you what those units, what their start line is, what their objective is, and you know the cards will tell you how to uh, to go after those things. And well, the AI and really it, he's he's even got it set up where the individual. B brigade commander or not br uh, division commanders uh, have their own personalities and they'll play cautiously if, if or they'll play aggressively depending on you know what their historical performance on the battlefield was I mean you, you know it's still possible that someone who normally you know plays cautiously you could roll and he'd go full on you know hell's bells assault but you know it's it's more it's more of a chance of him historically sticking to what he historically did so. All righty. Well, I think that was a good episode tonight. I yep. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, let's take a look at some of these cards. Now, yeah. I have. This is the first time I'm seeing these cards, but I, I mean, I know because it's it's basically uh, lock and load has a pattern for <laughs> a solo deck, but it, it you know each designer has to fit it to their game. So. Right, right, right. Uh, this is the first time I've seen Terry's cards. They look really clean. And I, I told Devin, I said, I, I mean, I understand why they're that, but I can't use my Las Vegas card shuffler because we're mm -hmm. too damn good. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is the one thing. And Tony, wardrobe, just showed up. He goes, here we go, a few minutes ago. Tony. Should should this World War II gamer consider this game? Jeff, I'm going to let you answer that. Oh, wait, wait, read that question again? Uh, so oh, Tony's okay. asking, should this World War II gamer consider this game? Uh, we're, is that Tony's board line? No, no, no. Uh, wardrobe. Oh, oh. Um, Todd. 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 Todd, not Tony. Todd. Todd. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Todd. sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Too many people with T's. Todd's, Tony. Okay, so Todd, I'm going to tell you the same thing. That you and I played the base game of GCACW. This would be a tactical version 
using a base rule and you you get the similar you, you, you when we play this thing two weeks from now and we're in there close and we're in the closest all stuff that's when you're going to see the excitement in this game in my opinion so. yeah todd do you like pretty lines on pretty maps this is that <laughs> I, I, i'll i'll, I'll I be a miniatures guy too so it's like yeah it, it has has a visual appeal but one, then the, the rules are really supportive one, uh, one of, of what one you want to do one of the things that sold me on this game when uh uh, Keith first uh, approached us about it. Is one Terry, all right? Terry, you mean Terry? Jeez, <laughs> ah, it's getting late at night. My mind is starting to shut down, and I haven't even had anything to drink. At um, least you have a mind. I got well, nothing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> when Terry brought this to us and approached us with it, um, aside from Terry's, uh, and I knew Terry from Labatai, so I knew he had the chops what to be able to design this because he's, you know, he's. He was instrumental in uh, a couple of the rule sets for Labat, but That's a the great thing, system. The, yeah. the thing that that was the primary thing that sold me. But the secondary thing, the counters. I, I absolutely love the look of the oh, counters. Okay. Once you explained it to me, the color difference mm -hmm. that made sense. What? Yep. Um, this is already on Kickstarter, right? It's uh, it, late pledges are still open. The files have been sent to China. They've been in the queue for ever and a day. Some strongly worded letters that we wrote to the printer. They are telling us that this is going to be in everybody's hot little hands in October. Along with... Well, how, how successful was the Kickstarter? Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it was pretty it, successful. It was... I mean, we 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 made profit on it. Now, right. was it as was it as big as uh, uh, Keith's game, World at War? No, it, not, it, not, it, not not by a long not the shot. kind of comparison you do. Here. I I know, I know. Um, well, it was it, it was more successful than Bitter Harvest. Let's just put it that way. I think the well, total yeah, at the end was was forty six thousand. The, the the okay. Well, first of all. You know, open your fingers and your hand up, and how many Napoleonic games in Portugal do you remember? Ever? Well, see, that's the thing. That that uh, yeah. legit. That is one of the other things. It's like, oh, this is covering my favorite area of Napoleonics, and that's the Peninsular War. Um, so, not many. Sure, you've got every once in a while there'll be a Talavera game, there'll be a Salamanca game, but the Rolasia Vermio campaign. I know there's a These camp. Were the first fights. These were the first Wellington fights. Yep. With yep. French force. Yeah. So you you really you you just don't see it now. I have higher expectations for this game going forward. One, it was an unknown system, and so maybe not a lot of people were going to jump into it. However, it is Terry, and he is known in the Labat Labat community. Eric, you know, he has tactfully and tentatively given his thumbs up on it and you know eric eric's big in the napoleonics community i think once people get their hands on this and we start seeing a lot more gameplay of it, it's going to generate a lot more interest in titles going forward are going to be more successful but i mean we made money on it there's no doubt about that we made money on it and enough so that we're going to continue supporting the series so I mean, I, I this is my first chance to have to get my hands on it, other right. than reading, you know, about it and everything. Yep, yep. And we've done what? You know, we've done one turn. I'm kind of set for my defense. I'm, you know, I'm anticipating it. I'm salivating. <laughs> you know, I t when you're reading a book and and you, you know you read a chapter and you know when you get to that last page, if you want to know what the next chapter is, that's the sign of good writing. Yep. Same thing with the game. If you're playing a turn and nothing seems to be happening and we're trading shots. But you're like you can feel the pressure build. Right. This is that. It's supportive of that because of the way the movement system works. The, the, the you know easily and cleanly and switching between formations without even noticing it. But you can see it visually. Um, having the skirmishers work so easily and well, and actually get to shoot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that kind of stuff. You know, me immediately. And of course, my brain's torturing myself. Oh my god, I got the rifles on my right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get yeah, ripped I was up. Sensitive as hell when I played this. Well, of course, I was using the solo bot to start with this one here, and I realized, you know what? I don't think I really need to because the French are going to be defending and falling away. So let's just play. I think I played a few turns with the bot, and then I went right into playing with the without it. Uh, right. But I do have one complaint. Dev, would you please start spelling my damn last name right? No. <laughs> oh, it's, it's got an e on the I'm end of it. I'm gonna sign off right here, mine. It's all yours, Dev. <laughs> 
I can't think of one I ever played with a developer, so. <laughs> I mean, Dev, I'm like, well, Dev, I haven't played anything with you yet, have I? Other than we just started Atlanta. Yeah, we just started doing Atlanta, which it's back to you, by the way. I got your. I put the file in there. <laughs> yeah, well, the the, the problem I, we probably shouldn't be talking about this on air, but you know, the problem with with <laughs> starting now, yeah, I exactly, know. <laughs> exactly. The problem with starting off with such a small scenario is that there, there really is no room for maneuvering. So it's it's like all right, my three brigades are just going to run up in your face and. We're going to shoot at each other. So, but it is good for us to start off to to figure out how the PBEM system works and uh, and just ease into it. I'm sure we'll be doing much larger yeah. scenarios later on. And you and I have talked about working out some way so people can watch us play it. So we're so yeah. That's kind of a little teaser for for what could be coming between uh, Jeff and I. Yeah, so. yeah. It's yeah. And I think what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to I'm going to like when I have my turn up or something. I think I'm going to record. And just sort of, you know, maybe maybe a couple of turns later down the road, then I'll, I'll maybe post a video explaining, you know, Do an what update, I think yeah, you were updates, doing. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. I think that 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 that'll probably be the best way to go. So, anyways, all righty. Well, we're uh, we're pushing what eleven o'clock for you guys. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think we'll go ahead and cut it here. We will return. July 28th, same bat time, same bat channel. We're going to continue this, and uh, it's it's going to get really exciting because I know what's coming because I've, I've been in this situation before, so I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I Thanks, Jeff. That gives me such confidence. <laughs> I know what's Jeff, coming. I wanna do, I, Jeff, I want to thank you for, for teaching me, by the way. Oh, man, this, this is going to be fun. It's my pleasure. Oh, likewise. All Bye right. Nope, go ahead. See you all on my birthday, July twenty. Ooh, oh, happy birthday in we'll advance! We'll have to give you happy birthdays then. Might be <laughs> handing you a victory <laughs> for your birthday. <laughs> Can you wrap it, please? <laughs> 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 all right, I'm out of here, guys. We'll talk all to right, you gentlemen. All right, everybody, you have a good evening, and we will talk to you later. Well, that will end this gaming session. May God bless you and keep you safe until next time. Friendly Fire is a lock and load publishing production.